1971, a crime thriller directed and produced by Alan Pakula made it to the big screen. The name of that movie was Clute. The film was written by Andy and Dave Lewis, and it starred Jane Fonda and Donald Sutherland in the lead roles. The movie is what's really the first installment of what became informally known as Pakula's Paranoia Trilogy. The other two films that were involved in this trilogy were The Parallax View in 1974 and All the President's Men in 1976. Donald Sutherland plays a small-town sleuth named John Clute, and Jane Fonda plays a character named Bree Daniel that's a jittery, high-class call girl. And it's quite odd that the name of Clute is the title of the film when most of the emphasis is really on Jane Fonda's role. It's a showier role in the film, and primarily this way because she did such a great job at it. But in his own really low-key way, Sutherland matches Fonda scene for scene. His performance is emotionally true, and these two really make this film one of the better private eye films of the early 1970s. The basic plot of the film is that private investigator John Clute is a personal friend of a Pennsylvania corporate executive who has been missing for several months. The corporation hires the soft-spoken private investigator Clute to find their missing executive, and they send him to New York to track him down. Unfortunately, Clute isn't exactly the ideal person to investigate the disappearance. He admits up front that he has no experience in missing persons cases, nor anything about big city investigations either. As a result, Clute finds himself over his head in a seemingly amoral world of the Big Apple, mixed in with call girls, pimps, and high-living lowlifes. Now, Jane Fonda won an Academy Award for Best Actress in this movie. And she definitely does an excellent job in it. But there was some baggage to go with Jane Fonda. She was a political nightmare for most people that were around her during that time. Even her dad had problems with her. And he was about as left-wing as you get. But in the making of her speech, which is really considered the shortest speech in movie history for the acceptance of an Oscar, all she said was thank you. Thank you very much, members of the Academy, and thank all of you who applauded. There's a great deal to say, and I'm not going to say it tonight. I would just like to really thank you very much. And the reason she worded this and said this this way is that her father sat down and coached her on what to say so that she wouldn't offend too many people. Her dad told her that she should avoid doing a political speech at the awards, and he also didn't want her to come off looking like a coward or a phony, someone who was dodging the issues of the day. So he basically wrote this short speech for her, and this is how she accepted her award. Bree's apartment in the movie was built on a soundstage at a New York film studio, and it was set up so that Jane Fonda could really spend the night at this location. And she did. The director even had a working toilet installed in the bathroom of the set. Jane was completely involved in decorating the apartment by deciding what Brie would like in that apartment. She felt like that she would be a cat lover and a romance novel reader. Jane also remembered that an actress from Lee Strasberg's class had occasionally gone to service John F. Kennedy, the President of the United States. So Jane Fonda, with the character of Brie, made her that high class of a call girl. If you'll notice, there's actually a signed photo of Kennedy that appears in Brie's apartment, and this pays homage to the high class call girl that visited John Kennedy. I find it interesting that when Peter Cable leaves to go to the helicopter, if you look carefully 
in the background, you can see the original World Trade Center being constructed. This is a really saddening sight and something we should never forget. Now, in the original script, Bree's psychiatrist was a male. But Jane Fonda felt that in the rehearsals that the character would never open up to a man. So she requested that the part be changed to a woman. She also requested to shoot these scenes with her at the psychiatrist at the end of shooting so that she would already be fully immersed into the character of Bree the Call Girl. Both Donald Sutherland and Jane Fonda found that lighting this set took an enormous amount of time. The actors would rehearse from about 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. And then they would return to their trailers and just sit and watch TV or play cards until noon or 1. And then they would head back to the set and shooting would start. Now if you look real closely in this film, you can find future film star Sylvester Stallone, where he makes an appearance in this film as an extra. You really have to look for him, and I myself right now can't remember where that is in the film. Now, Warner Brothers, being their usual thorn in the side of most production people and directors, they really wanted to remove Jane Fonda and the director, Alan Pakula, from this project at one time before the shooting actually started. But it just didn't work out. They weren't able to get it done because most other people had turned the studio down on these roles. So they went back to their original choice of Fonda and the director. Barbara Streisand was one of the ones that was offered the role of Brie Daniels, but she turned it down. Now, if you look real closely towards the end of the film, you will notice and see a familiar face and voice, and that's Jean Stapleton. And in this film, she's using her Edith Bunker voice and accent and even her mannerisms. She pops up playing Teresa, Mr. Goldfarb's assistant or secretary. She was, in fact, starring in All in the Family when this movie came out. So she worked with Jane Fonda in this film, and then later she brushed shoulders with Jane Fonda's father, Henry, when he hosted an All in the Family 100th episode retrospective show five years later in 1976. Although Jane Fonda had planned on playing Scared for the scene with the murderer, when she heard the tape recording of the call girl about to be murdered, and she heard the fear in her voice, she unexpectedly, in real life, started crying. She didn't have to worry about pretending to be scared. The person that composed the music was Michael Small, and the director of the film referred to the main theme of the score as the siren call. Clute was only the second film score that Michael Small had done. He felt like that the director, Pakula, took a big risk with him in the fact that he used a really basically unknown composer. Now, one of the side notes to the film is that Donald Sutherland and Jane Fonda developed a non-exclusive romantic relationship off-screen, which lasted until about June of 1972. And he was her date to the Oscars when she won the Best Actress Award for this movie. The scene with the psychiatrist was really put together on an ad-lib basis. There wasn't much script to it at all. The director only used one camera when he shot this. And he later said that he should have done it with two. Because Vivian Nathan's reactions were much more interesting in the takes where the camera focused on Jane Fonda. In an effort to prepare for this role as Brie, Jane Fonda spent an entire week in New York City with high-class call girls and madams. She would accompany them on their outings and to after-hours clubs to pick up men. Jane was terribly disturbed that none of the men showed any interest in her. When none of the pimps offered to represent her, she became convinced that it was because she wasn't desirable enough to play a prostitute. And she just didn't think that she was the right person 
for this role. And she asked the director to release her from her contract. And she even went as far as to tell the director that he needed to hire Faye Dunaway instead of her. The director refused to let her go and told her that she would be perfect for this part. Clute was praised for its screenplay and for Jane Fonda's performance. She made all the right choices from the mechanics of her walk and to her voice inflection that shows the girl's raging psyche. This is truly a rare performance. Donald Sutherland is not too shabby either as the private eye Clute. And he has a determination to succeed. He really wants to stick to the case. The mystery he has to solve isn't all that complex, but the film itself is. It's a terrific character study of two very different people, both questioning their lives in different ways. I consider this highly recommended viewing, especially for you guys that are detective buffs and kind of like a psychological drama. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll continue to chase the classics.